What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing another Jiu Jitsu shenanigans tier list. This time it's going to be on ultimate abilities. Thanks to the G Wolf in the comment section for giving me this idea. So if any of you are new around here, remember to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Right guys, so we're going to get onto our first set of moves, which we are going to be starting with Hakari. So lucky volley, I'm going to put it in B tier and I can explain why. Firstly, it doesn't even go through block till the last punch, um, which isn't very good. Secondly, you have to be put in a very close quarter situation. So if you're having like a 1v1 with like a Gojo that's awakened, it's really hard to even use this ability. A lot of times in fights, I don't even use this ability because it's kind of useless, okay? Lucky Rushdown, however, is like probably one of Hikari's like best moves. I don't think Hikari has any insane moves, but um, because he's invincible, you know, I can't include that in the list, like Hikari's invincibility as an ability, because it's more of like a passive. It makes a lot of his moves S tier because, you know, you're invincible. Okay, Overwhelming Luck is a very good move. However, only if you use Rhythm at the start, as soon as you get your Awakening, because if you didn't know, Rhythm actually makes your abilities start up a little bit quicker, which really helps with Overwhelming Luck. If you're wondering like, oh my God, this move takes so long to use. And also it's really hard to hit people with it for some reason. You tend to do like 18 loops around someone and then you finally hit them. Okay, Energy Surge, good move as well. It can go through block. The only problem is, I think it can go through block. The only problem is they have to be slightly in front of you to use it. So you kind of have to use it after a few of your other moves. Okay, Rhythm is probably like the best R ability in the whole game. I mean, you literally just get your Awakening, pop the R ability, and then bang, all of your moves are slightly faster. And then you can probably use it like a second amount during the fight as well. Okay. Now we're going to go on to Gojo. Now I do think Gojo probably does have the best awakening in the game. So like if I put Holy Purple in S tier, I'm sure no one's going to be like, well, actually it's A tier. No, it is, it is S tier. There's literally nothing it can't do except from have range. Um, but if you're in like a 1v1 arena, like in ranked or something, I think it goes across the whole map anyways. It can destroy domains. I'm pretty sure it could destroy a Hakari domain from the inside. Um, it does like... 70% of your health. I mean, there's not much you can do against Hollow Purple. Red, I'm going to put an A tier because you have to aim it. I mean, that's about the only reason I'm putting an A tier because it still does insane damage with the um, Black Flash and whatnot. Okay, that's Blue Max. I mean, it is an insane ability. For what it is, it shouldn't even do that much damage because it's kind of meant to just group everyone together. It does like 50% of your health for some reason and you can like spin people so fast they literally fly out the map sometimes which is really funny infinite void i mean bro this literally gives you an, an instant kill i mean why shouldn't it be there okay now we're on to megumi's move set we have divine pummel which is obviously his maharaga one i don't know if i should be doing this one first but i'm going to i generally think this is a d tier move firstly it takes ages to start up Secondly, it does like nothing. Um, it can be cancelled so quickly if the person just punches you because its hitbox is really weird. I think this is probably the worst ultimate ability in the game. I don't think Maharaga is that strong anyways, and he takes so much skill to use. I thought he was going to sort of like adapt and I thought that'd be kind of cool, but he's like a parrying character and I don't know how people really feel like that. I think it's kind of cool, but you know. Great Serpent, on the other hand, is a very good ability. I mean... Firstly, the poison effect is OP, okay, and um, yeah, Shadow Swarm, I don't actually know where to put this one, I'm going to put it in C tier, because it actually feels like a base ability, now let me explain why, okay, firstly, a special ability to go into domains isn't even useful, unless they're Hakari, okay, because who the hell wants to go into a Sukuna domain, um, unless he makes it so it removes a sure hit effect on you and anyone else who enters it because that would make sense because that's what happened to Dagon don't know why he hasn't done it really then that would make it really good and the base ability is like alright I mean it makes you invincible it's kind of similar to overwhelming luck but it doesn't really do that much damage Max Elephant on the other hand is very good okay it does I kind of want to put it in S tier but you know it does tons of damage um and well, I mean literally goes through like any part of the map really it's really good and it's really good for setting up like Maharaga and stuff like that now Maharaga is sadly gonna go in C tier I don't think Maharaga is that good now 
I'm going to probably get a lot of arguing people in the comments saying that he is quite good. And I can, I'm going to explain why he's good and bad. Firstly, he has no moves yet. Secondly, he punches so slowly. Thirdly, he takes ages to summon. It can get cancelled so easily. Fourthly, if your opponent just runs away from you, I don't know why I said fourthly. Fourth, if your person just, if the enemy just runs away from you, your thing just gets, you know, drained quick. Okay, unless you punch them loads. Um, so I kind of think it's useless. If if the enemy just stuns you loads, like with a bunch of like dismantles, he isn't really that good yet, guys. Uh, however, one thing I really do want to see from Maharago, I've been talking about this a lot. You know the scene where like he's throwing the cards at Suka. I really want. The to add that I've been finding out I've actually been saying his name wrong the whole time. It's Tezi, not Teze. Teze. Okay, now we're on to Sukuna's. So Sukuna has like an OP ass R move. I mean, Bro does like a quadrillion damage with this. I'm sure you guys already know the combo. Three left clicks R. Uh, no, no, three left clicks dismantle. Three left clicks R, and then rush, and your opponent is literally dead. And that's like barely using any of your moves. I just noticed I should have probably put World Cutting Slash in here, but God knows how I would have done that. So if a World Cutting Slash was in here, it'd probably be S tier because I mean, why wouldn't it be? Okay, Rush is like my favorite ability in the whole game. It's so fun to use. Um, I wouldn't say it's very useful though. Well, actually, no, it's probably an S tier ability actually. It's kind of like Lucky Rushdown, but better. It does so much damage and like it sets you up for so many things. If you literally hit someone in a domain with Rush, they just die because they get hit with the uh, slashes as well, which is so cool. Malevolent Shrine, I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't be S tier. Open? Listen, I don't think it's really that good, guys. I, it doesn't do that much damage, and half the time you never even hit it. And it could be Margie kicked, and it could be cancelled like three seconds into, the uh, into actually using your animation. So, I don't think it's that good. Dismantle, I mean, it's not incredibly good. It's not mid. It's it's good. Okay, so this is the final tier list. I mean, it's looking pretty even. I mean, a lot of abilities are obviously going to be in this area because, you know, the ultimate abilities. So, thank you all for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Goodbye.